Welcome, everybody. I'm very happy uh, you could join. Thank you very much for being here today. My name is Amit. I am the creative director for Promo. Um, what we're going to do today is give you an overview of how Promo AI works. Um, I'm going to give a little bit of insight. I'm going to continue. I'm going to give a little bit of an overview how it works and uh, insights into my workflow. I'm going to give a few examples of how Promo AI works and a few tips. I've allowed a Q&A, um, so you can feel free to ask me any questions written or Q&A line is open. So feel free to ask questions while we're doing this. So we all know content is king and video rules this domain. Uh, engaging with your audience and creating content as a small business owner or a medium business owner can be quite a hassle. It takes time and it costs a lot of money to produce videos or at least use to. And what Promo AI attempts to offer users is an easy way to ideate and create engaging video content for a fraction of the time and cost that it used to. Um, so Promo AI ideates, it produces, it schedules, and it publishes videos all in one tool. Today, we're going to talk about um, uh, how we create videos, how we publish and download, how we edit videos, and we have two ways to do this. So I'm going to show you both ways. The first one is using the chat-based editor, which is a feature inside Promo AI, which is a very, very cool feature, one of our biggest things. And for manual tweaks, I'm also going to show you how to use the classic editor. And within that classic editor, we're going to talk a little bit of how to, uh, of best practices for footage selection, text styling, outro and logo design, and adapting for ratios. At the end, we're going to have a little bit of time for questions. So I'm going to dive into the product right now. So when you log into Promo, you're usually directed to the Promo homepage. This is the create page, we call it, which has ready-made templates, which you can also use as a Promo AI user if you want, and footage, all from Getty Images and iStyle. To access Promo AI from anywhere on the website, you go up here to the Create New button, you press it, and you press on Start with Promo AI. You can do this from anywhere on the website. You can also access it from the uh, Planner page, the Promo AI Planner page. This is like the scheduler. It's You can have it in a monthly view or in a weekly view. And this is where all your Promo AI videos are stored. You can see I already have a few here. I'm going to get to them later. To start generating, as I said, you just press on Start with Promo AI. Um, now, because I've already done this, it kind of saves my last brand. So I'm just going to go back because this is the first time you use it, you will see this page. So I want to go over this for the first time. Now, what you do here is very easy. Basically, for today's for today's example, I'm going to choose the agency RE, which is like the agency from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, just for fun. All you have to do to start your uh, creating videos is enter your domain. That's it. That's all you have to do for the first time. You press generate to go into the next screen. It automatically fetches your agency name and a short description. Now, this description is taken from your website, but we do have a formula that kind of enhances a little bit of the video creation if you follow these four steps. And basically, it's adding the business name, which we've added, and then giving the location of, of where your business is. It might be worldwide or global or specific to a certain location. And adding a category or niche, uh, and then a target audience. So for example, I'm going to copy paste something I've created before for this agency, which I think creates better videos. So for the agency, this agency in Beverly Hills, I would write a real estate agency in California, that's where we are, the location, specializing in luxury real estate for millennials, that's our category or niche, with a fo or, or an audience, with a focus on newlyweds and pet-friendly homes. For example, 
And the more targeted I am, the better the videos that come out for this will be. Um, I can select my brands. I can, I can, if I have more than one brand, then I can select them from my previously stored brand or add a new one. It automatically takes the logo, watermark, and colors, but each of these are editable. Now, the next thing is to change how many videos you want. So automatically it gives me two weeks, but I can change this. I can change the start date or the end date. So it starts usually on today's date, but I can choose to do videos from today to Friday. I don't want to do videos on the weekend. Or I can start on the 1st of July if I want and do a whole week. Or I can change it manually here if I only want four videos. Or if I want a custom date, I can choose to do Tuesdays and Thursdays only for this month. Either way, uh, you can choose whatever you like. Now, I'm just going to go back and come back to this because the other thing you can do instead of entering your website address is you can enter a topic. So for example, I'm a real estate agency, but I don't want videos to be created for my, I want a certain topic. I want certain content videos that now uh, I'm, I'm really eager to do. Now, you may have these ideas in your head already if you know what you want to do, but what I like to do a lot of time is go to one of those free uh, large language models, for example, Gemini or ChatGPT, and I can ask it to, um, give me three topics for content videos for a global luxury real estate agency, for example, or even add my name into it. This is, I like to get the help of these three things. So it gives me like ideas and concepts. So luxury real estate experts behind the scenes with the concept. So I can copy paste these things into my, um, into the promo AI. So I go to here, I enter the topic, I go to the next stage, and then I enter the concept of this video might be of, I add it here. The only thing to remember if you do on a topic video is to add your name because it doesn't fetch it automatically and add your business's logo because it only fetches it automatically if I am using the URL because it knows where to take it from. But if you enter a topic, basically it doesn't really know where to go to fetch it. Or you can select it from my brands if you have it ready, okay? And you choose the colors, everything's great. So that's the topic version. I've pre-made these videos. So I'm just gonna go back to creating online videos using the website. I'm gonna add my website again. I'm gonna choose from today till Friday. I only want four videos and apply. I go to here, I'm gonna re-paste my description, again, with my formula, which is the business name, the location, category or niche, and the target audience. Grammarly corrects my spelling, and I'm gonna press generate. Now, while it's generating, what it does, it usually takes under two minutes to create. It doesn't really matter if you create four or five or 30 videos. By the way, you can create up to 30 videos. It usually create, does all these videos in under two minutes. It might take a little bit longer if it's like peak hours and a lot of people are generating at the same time just because of the traffic. Um, but what it does behind the scenes while it's generating the video is now it's kind of crawling the website. It's reading your website. It's reading all the content that is in there. It's taking it, it's aggregating the info and then it creates a sort of marketing strategy. So if you've selected two weeks, for example, it could say, okay, in two weeks, oh, I'm going to make two uh, marketing videos. I'm going to make three content videos. I'm going to make a listicle or two. And because 4th of July might fall under this, I'm going to do a 4th of July greeting, which is uh, personalized to, to your brand. And it kind of like creates a little marketing strategy. After it does a marketing strategy, it selects, it, it goes back to ChatGPT. We use ChatGPT for uh, Turbo in, in our system, or we're implementing it now, but it's ChatGPT4 right now. And, um, and it writes scripts for these videos. So whether it's sales videos, greetings, listicle, inspirational videos, whatever, then it selects the most relevant footage from Getty Images and kind of like edits a video together. And it also creates 
post copy for each of these videos. So these four videos were created right now. I haven't seen them. Let's watch them together. Let's see what we got. this video is about personalized service experience. Now, what it also does, it writes the copy for your social media posts. So you can copy, I'll show you when we schedule it in a second, but it already does that for you. Now, this, is, this uses AI. So I just want to say some videos can come out great and perfect, and it happens. Uh, but a lot of the times, these videos are a great starting point. They're like 60, 70, 80% made. And you can kind of like tweak a little bit. I'm going to show how to do that in a little second. But it's a great ideator and starting point. You rarely will get like 100% of the videos, 100% perfect all the time. But you might. It depends, again, on what your business is and how easy it is for it to learn about it. But a lot of the time, you kind of like want to watch them. You kind of want to uh, review them and, and see maybe you want to tweak it a little bit, but it's a great instigator because a lot of time you're stuck with ideas, you don't really know what to do. To it, but... So these are more marketing oriented videos. And before, by the way, I showed you a little bit, you know, how to do a topical video. So I did this just before we started this presentation. It's the same brand, but it's about it's a content-oriented video. So this is a listicle, I think. So it's tip, tips for sustainable outdoor space. Now this can be great because you don't always just selling and selling and selling your business. A lot of the time you want to engage your users with great content. Just keep them entertained with your brand on social media. And then when, you're, when, when you create great content for them, they follow you and afterwards you can obviously market them. Now, we create these videos um, in a square format because it kind of, it fits any media. So it fits social media, it fits mobile, but you can change it to vertical or wide for wide if you want presentations or indoor uh, screens in your office or whatever, or vertical if you want for stories or TikTok or reels. And with a click of a button, basically, it changes them very, very quickly. You can do any one of these ratios when you're creating a video. Um, that's a good question, Sherish. I'm going to answer that in a minute. Brother. Remind me in a little bit because I, I want to get to these steps first. Okay. Um, back to um, video. So I'm going to hold this for a second because of music. Um, so I have this video. Now I can do, I can download the video by pressing the download button. I can uh, publish it, which I'm going to show schedule and publish. I'm going to show right now, which is this very, very simple things to do. M my social media accounts are already, um, I've, I've already linked them. Okay. So for example, I want to publish this video to my Instagram account, but you can link as many social media accounts as you want. So it shows me, it has a little preview on the side. It's already uh, scheduled for the 11th, but obviously I can change this date to whenever I want and I can change the scheduling time. And uh, it copied the post link that the AI suggested for it. So it's like what, what this video is about and why it should uh, interest your users. You can post it for later, you can post it for now, or you can save it as a draft, which means it's scheduled, but it won't actually publish. And now I wanna take this uh, video that I created and I wanna copy paste it to my Facebook account. So you can click add another post, but then it will copy it without the post copy. Uh, by the way, you can choose post or real, whatever. And you can just duplicate this, press the duplicate button, and this is my Facebook account. So now I have the same video that will be posted either on the same or different hours. I can choose what I want to do with this and for different social media accounts. I can choose that 
uh, the Instagram one will be vertical and the Facebook one will be uh, square. Now it's regenerating it. So I shouldn't have pressed that. It will take a second. I want to go back. Okay, so it will be, oh, sorry, I pressed the Y. It's going to be wide on Facebook and it's going to be vertical on Instagram or the other way around. I can't remember what. It and then you go to publish. It just makes sure that these are the correct dates and you do continue and it's scheduled and will be published on the date that you asked it to be published on. Um, another thing you can do is access the chat to edit feature. Um, Shirish, I haven't forgotten your question. I'm just going to get into it in a little bit. Um, so to chat the to the chat to edit feature, you can access either through this button or or chat to edit button down here. And um, what it does is it opens a direct conversational link with uh, ChatGPT. Now there's very cool things you can do here. Let's just see the video for a second, just to see what we're changing. So this is the first caption. So for example, um, I can ask it to change the content. So I just chat with the editor. For example, I want to tell it to change the first text to hello there, like this. So you can control uh, all the content through this chat to edit feature and it edits it on. All right. You can ask it to adjust the length of the captions. So you can ask it to make it shorter or longer or change the text format, for example, ask it to write it in bullet points or step-by-step -step instructions. Um, you can boost your content by asking it to add more data or statistics or details to make your message more impactful. So let's just ask it, uh, add statistics to text. Now, I have to say that even we don't know everything that you can do with this, because every time we play with it, we discover another thing. Um, uh, because it's directly linked to ChatGPT, so you can do it through there. So it added, so instead of the text that I had before, which we didn't see, I'm sorry, I forgot to show it to you, it added a little bit more statistics into the text itself. Um, you can ask it to focus on your audience, like highlight some user pain points or benefits or goal or focus on your goals. And you can set the tone, um, the tone of voice, so for example, I'm just going to discard this because we haven't seen the video. Let's go back to the video we saw the first time. Personalized and tailored, the agency already different. So you can change the tone of voice. If I press the chat to edit, I'm going to ask it to rewrite this video as Yoda. So then it changes the whole tone of voice to uh, to whatever you want it. So you can be more formal, funnier, uh, less formal, or talk personalized, tailored, the agency, RE difference is. You can do funny things with this. So this obviously took uh, Yoda's kind of like speech patterns. Obviously this isn't the right place to do this. And uh, you can edit with a bang. You can ask it to direct users to your website or give it a certain uh, promotion that you want to do. And um, you can also, whoops, you can also uh, put all these uh, prompts together. So you can ask it to make the text longer, add statistics, talk as Yoda, and uh, add a uh, link to my website at the end in one prompt, and it will do those things for you. Oh, just before I answer questions, one last thing. Uh, you can ask it to change the language. So it supports all the languages that uh, ChatGPT supports. I think it's almost 30 by now, but I mean, it's all the major ones, Spanish, 
I asked it to change Spanish, Russian. Uh, I think it even, I think the right to left or top to down, it supports Japanese and Chinese out of those ones. But um, so you can kind of like target different audiences with different. Um, um, with different, uh, sorry, I was reading here. I got distracted. We, well, LinkedIn, it usually, okay. So uh, Todd asked if I have a specific theme that works well for LinkedIn posts. So LinkedIn posts usually, I mean, a lot of people suggest, you can check this out in like websites. A lot of people suggest to actually do like the wide ratio for LinkedIn because a lot of people view LinkedIn actually on their desktop computers. But you can do either wide or square because if people watch it on um, on Square, on their mobiles and Square might be better maybe for both. But you can ask the chat editor to kind of like uh, make the text more suitable for a LinkedIn. Uh, user, or or you can ask it while you do the topic videos, maybe to specify it more for LinkedIn usage. Now, Shirish uh, actually asked if he if he can upload product videos from a website. So it doesn't do it automatically when you put your website in the Create Chat Editor, but I will show you now how to upload your own footage, so you can. Uh, manually add your own footage when you're creating a video to replace. So for example, if you're doing a video for smartphones and it gives you stock footage of smartphones, you can replace it with your videos. And the videos, once you upload them, they're saved in your footage bank. So you can access them all the time. And we are working on a new product that should be released, I hope, in the next couple of months, which actually will crawl your certain, not only websites, but any domains, blog posts, whatever, and will automatically retrieve those images and footages for you. Um, so just to complete about um, the chat editor is, um, it goes back to the question I was just asked. You can ask it to change clips. Okay, so change uh, first clip. Let's just see what it was. So it's a clip of these people sitting around to astronauts, for example, just to come on. Change the first clip to astronauts. Now, this doesn't do it automatically. What it does is it accesses the um, media library that we're linked in, which is Getty. So it wrote my request up here, astronaut space. By the way, if you just ch say change the first clip, it will look for clips with the same um, tag that the first clip had. So if that was real estate and people sitting around a house, it will automatically look for people sitting around a house. And you can change it. So you can choose anything you want here, or you can change it to any other word you want. Horses. So, and this is all Getty Images footage, right? So it's video, you can ask for photo. And um, you can access your uploads. This is answering your question, Shirish. These are things I've uploaded, but I can upload anything from my computer up to here and use those clips in my videos. Videos, photos, whatever. And this is the Getty Images. So I'm gonna place it with this footage of a horse. So obviously it doesn't have uh, any relevance to the video I did with real estate, but you can easily tweak it through here. You can also change the music. You can ask it, and when you change the music, you have to give it like a broader theme. So you can make ask to change to fun music or something more epic or something more dramatic or sad, et cetera. And you can ask to change the text position. So please, if it if the text isn't uh, positioned properly, you can ask it to put it on the top of the frame or the top, try to use a nine position. Like if this is a square, so top left, top center, top right, center, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, this is a chat editor. This is a real time saver. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do directly from here uh, through the videos. But if you want, and if you have kind of like, and you like a manual approach to these things, you can access um, Promo's classic editor, which is something that we've had for a few years. Obviously, this is before the whole AI revolution. I'm going to take um, this video I have here, for example, you press it and 
through this, we call this kebab menu, through this three dot kebab menu, you uh, go to this edit video feature. Now, one caveat, this opens the classic editor, which is, if you've ever edited a video, obviously it's, it's pretty simple, I'll show it. One caveat is, once you edit the video in the classic editor, it will be saved to your AI videos and it will go back, bring you back to the place, but you won't be able to edit with a chat editor because the chat editor basically now doesn't have any memory of what you've done here manually. It can only remember things it did. Okay, so you can edit it, but then you'll have to keep continue editing on the menu. So this editor is very simple. It looks like a regular editor. The, the clips are at the bottom. Above each of the clips are the captions. Pressing on any of these things allows you to edit them. On the top, on the left, you have the editor. You can switch to media if you want to see all of Getty Images media and kind of like select something from there or the music. Um, so if I, I if I uh, choose these captions, for example, I can change the caption text style, the animation. So I don't like this more, this animation. I want to change it to a different one or a different one. There's a lot of animations here to choose from. I like the heart style, so I choose that one. And uh, double clicking on the text allows me to change any of the text. Um, hell. I didn't try to do that. And um, you can change the color of any of the captions, the background or the text color. You can change the fonts using any of these. You can change the positioning. This is kind of like the nine position I was talking about before. So I want it to be on the top right corner. And uh, you can also change the ratio of the video and work on any of them. Um, you can change the clip by clipping on it, asking to replace or duplicate or trim it. Um, you can add a color filter. Okay. Um, you can add a color filter to this video. A lot of the times, like a difference, I think a diff good video, in my opinion, is always legible. I think more important than being creative um, Sorry, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to get to your question in a minute. Um, and more important than being creative, it doesn't have to come instead of that, but it is, it's for people to understand what you're trying to tell them. The messaging is everything, or people understanding your message is everything. So a lot of time, if you have a text style that doesn't have a background, for example, I'll choose this. And I really love this text style. I really love the animation of it. But... It's, it's not really legible over the video. So there's two things you can do. One really easy fix is choosing the background footage and then choosing like this color filter and adding a filter to the image. So it doesn't have to be fully black, but just by adding a little bit of black color or, an, or any dark color for that matter, makes the text a lot more legible. So that's a really cool fun trick. The other thing is, uh, you can move your text to a place which is clear. So for example, if I don't like this, I couldn't read it because the house was kind of like in the middle, right? But this area down here is really good for text. So I would move it down here so I could see it better. Or obviously you can change the image behind you to something that, uh, or maybe move it a little bit sometimes. That helps to see your video. I do, though, recommend that once you choose a text position, you kind of leave it in the same place during the video. It's really, it, it's, it really messes with your eyes if you're looking at a video and then you have like a text at the top and then on the bottom and then in the middle. You can change it a little, like the first scene can have a title in the middle and then you can move downwards for the next three scenes and then back to the middle at the end but try to more or less keep it in the same place. So you can play with it. If the text on the top, on the bottom left corner looks better for the entirety of the video, I, I usually try to keep it in the same place. It's really good for the viewer, okay? Um, also, when you're changing footage, 
I try to look because these videos at the end of the day, like 80% of them, or depending again on your business, are viewed on mobile. I try to choose images that aren't very busy. So for example, this image is super busy. So there's a lot going on. You're going to put text over it. I don't know if you're going to see everything because when you're editing, you're editing on your computer screen, right? It looks pretty big, but people are going to see this. And, and it's small screen. So for example, this image is a lot more focused and the way to choose images that are good are usually if they're not busy with a lot of action happening in them. One action thing like this was great. You can put your text over here and it should be fine. I'm gonna go back here, pressing the text kind of like shows me the text again. So this is a like this look, I can see the text a lot better here than for example, the image I had with the house. Okay, I'm gonna see if I have a few questions here to answer, and then I'm gonna go back. Um, so Jonathan asks, I have a video I created with clips that are no longer available. I was hoping to keep same video created and change to new brand. Is there a way to do that? Um, clips that are no longer available in Getty Images, you mean? I mean, uh, Getty Images, does change a little bit of their clips every from time to time. Um, and then they're not accessible. So this might be something from very, very long ago, but but no, you, you can't access clips that are no longer available in Getty Images because we can't access them. Uh, but you can definitely find really good substitutes. Um, yes, Shirish, uh, the Getty Images, can be used for marketing as standalone images without any copyright infringements? Um, well, that's a good question. I mean, you, you, you try to email me later, I'll, I'll look into it. I mean, you can't just use promo to access Getty images from behind the scenes and download them. You, you, you have to, the, the, the copyright is good for editing through our system or changing them or shortening them or cropping them or whatever. It doesn't have to have copy on them, but it has to be processed through this. Um, Edward asks, how in a manual mode to resize the length of the clip and the rest of the clips move automatically? So yeah, if you make it longer, it moves all the clips behind it, see? Back to the first position. Um, you might sometimes have to like, you can move this to here to be instead of this one. That's how you kind of like move the clips around. Nadriana, how will archival video content sales be affected by AI? Archival video content sales um, be affected by AI? I, I'm not sure what I, I understand what you mean by archival video content sales. If you've edited a video in promo and you've downloaded that video and then you use that video, that's fine. The only problem is if, if the video is no longer accessible through the system. I hope that answers your question. Um, okay, back to a little bit of, 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 um, of things to do on, on the classic editor. So I said before, a few tips are try to keep the text in the same position throughout the video. Another tip is once you um, selected a font you like and a text style you like, try to keep consistency through the video. Again, it kind of messes with your eyes if the font in each frame is different and the animation is different. Again, you can, you can, mix and match between animations. For example, if I use this heart animation for the beginning of the video and then the rest of the video, I just use another animation, that's fine. But every single frame having a different animation is very messy. And it kind of like tends to be, come out very messy video at the end. So my suggestion is use one or two text styles throughout the video, one font throughout the video and one or two positions throughout the video. I, I, same goes for colors. Try to use your brand colors as much as you can. It might be a little boring for you, but it creates, that's what creates a brand for your users. Um, try to feel the animation that you choose to fit the content. So this heart might be really nice animation 
that you like, but if the content is super, super serious now and it's talking about, uh, I don't know, uh, getting better rates for real estate, then it might not be the best suited one. Some of the animations, like this animation is really good for like news. It kind of feels like a uh, new style. And the summer are a little bit more festive. So I'm supposed to be on here. And um, OK, I'm going to answer a few more questions in a minute. Let's just get back to this. Um, another thing I told you, you can use the opacity layer. Another thing is to pay attention to how many words you have per frame. You don't want to add too many words because in, in a short amount of time, because then people won't be able to read it. And we talked about legibility being key. So a good rule of thumb is two words per second. If you have 12 words on a two second clip or on a two second timeline, it will move too fast and people won't be able to read it. Some of the animations also have a build time. So it takes like half a second to build in and half a second to build out. So even more, if it's short words like I am, her, very, very short things, then maybe not count those words, but more or less eight words is like three to four seconds, minimum screen time. Um, this was added through the AI, but obviously you can add any logo um, as a watermark throughout the video and you can add a logo at the end of the video. Now, this is a good logo because it has color, but if you have uh, a logo that, let's try this one. If you have a logo that doesn't have a background, then, well, it works really good on this full background, but it doesn't show as much. So what you can do is you kind of add a crop to it, like a square or a circle crop to it. You can't see it because I'm gonna add a color. And you add color to that circle that you just did. So this logo now stands out more on the frame. So I would suggest adding a white or black or red background depending on your logo's colors, um, just for it to be stand out. And don't be afraid to leave it quite big if you want, because again, these videos are gonna be smaller in somebody's screens. Um, also, another suggestion is Leave the outro long if you want. I mean, what happens at the end of the video on Facebook or Reels or whatever is that it cuts back to black when the video finishes. So if you have a messaging on this frame, it's actually better to leave it on for like five seconds so people can watch it before it turns to black than making it short. I mean, it's the end of the video. It doesn't really cost you anything. It's, I mean, again, I, if you're paying a lot for crossing a 30 second boundary for a video that you're promoting, then yes. But try to give a few seconds to the last uh, to the last scene. Okay. After you've saved your video, you can preview it by pressing the play button. And you can save and preview with this button. Now it goes back to AI, but as I said, this video is now rendered. We've rendered the video, so the AI can't really manipulate it anymore. You can always go back to the classic editor and re-edit manually. You just can't use the ch chat editor anymore. Um, so Jonathan asked if I can say how ChatGPT uses the URL to find key services or offerings from our brand. Um, ChatGPT only currently only crawls the homepage. So anything you have on that homepage, it uses to create, uh, to learn about your brand, but it also learns about that subject as much as it can from the rest of the web. So, um, for now, anything you have on your homepage, he will be able to kind of like adapt that into uh, strategies and scripts later on. How it does that technically, I don't know. And it, we also use another company that's called Brand Fetch, and that's how we take like the video, uh, the logo, and the colors. Um, 
Yeah, so now this uh, video is back on here. Um, let me see how much time we have. Uh, we're almost, almost, almost out of time. Just so one last thing, just to show you, um, you can access like these really short video tutorials I've made on YouTube through the website or through our YouTube website, which I'll show in a second. You can manage your brands through this button. And if you have a lot of videos, by the way, I didn't show you this because I didn't put two videos at the same date. But if you have more than one video on the same day, they will be stacked one on top of the other. And only the first one will have a preview. The first one with a preview, the top one, will always be the latest video you created, just so you know. But pressing on any one of them when they're stacked will open it for a preview as well. And if you have a lot of videos accumulated, you can filter them uh, in this view by things that were suggested by yeah, your draft schedule published, or by the social media you intend to post them on. Um, yeah. As I said, we have a YouTube channel, Promo AI, on promo.com. So the handle on YouTube is promo.com, and the channel is Promo AI. There's a lot of educational videos I've uploaded there, and I will upload this webinar onto there as well as previous webinars from the past months. Um, does anybody have any questions just before we finish up? Am I able, Jonathan asks, am I able to remove backgrounds on logos inside this tool? No, you have to upload a background list. But if you have a logo with a lot of background, then the crop will crop it like, like it did this logo. I mean, let me just see if I can access. Um, so if you have a, a lot of red on your logo, let's see if I can show you this really quick here before it ends. So I'm going to change this logo to the red one. So it does crop the red behind it, but it's just this. It doesn't remove backgrounds. Okay. Um, okay. We're really almost out of time. Is there any questions just before we go? Um, okay. Um, thank you very much. Please go to YouTube channel. Uh, you can chat through me through the email. I know, I think you have, uh, through the webinar that you got, I think you can answer me through there if there's any more questions and, uh, or just reach out to our support anytime. Uh, thank you very much everyone for joining. Um, that's it. Been a pleasure. Bye everyone.